My name is Geerten van Uwamerongen and it is my honor to chair the IPCA 2015 meeting to be held in Amsterdam. This uh, meeting will bring together scientists from all over the world working on impedance-based uh, cellular assays. This meeting is unique in that it brings together both uh, users and developers, or in other words, that it brings together uh, burning biological questions and novel applications to solve uh, those questions. A special feature of IPCA 2015 is that it will be held in conjunction with the DEPS, the Dutch Endothelial Biology Society. Over the years, um, a major part of the meetings has been dedicated to endothelial function. And it's my expectation in bringing uh, bio endothelial biology experts together with impedance-based sensing experts that both fields will flourish enormously from this interaction. As uh, the IPCA is the premier meeting in the world for impedance-based assays, this is the opportunity for you to showcase your research, to interact with your colleagues and fellows, and to help in solving burning biological questions. I look forward to welcome you uh, in Amsterdam in 2015. Electrical cell impedance sensing, or ESIS, played a key role in the research that culminated in this Circulation 2012 paper. The main message of the paper is that the potent anti-cancer drug imatinib protects against edema and vascular leakage. And the research started with a clinical observation that imatinib reversed pulmonary edema in a patient suffering from a rare lung disease. In the paper, we tested the hypothesis that imatinib protects the endothelial barrier from inflammatory attacks leading to vascular permeability. The paper starts with ESIS uh, recordings uh, measuring uh, electrical resistance and showed that imatinib indeed uh, reduced the drop in electrical resistance when endothelial monolayers were stimulated with inflammatory mediators like histamine, thrombin, uh, and VEGF. This important finding uh, was uh, verified in endothelial cells from several different vascular beds and turned out to be highly reproducible. We verified this, those findings in animal models for vascular permeability and again that led to the same result. Then uh, we went on by analyzing the data in the RB alpha mode uh, of the ESIS. Surprisingly, uh, imatinib had no effect on the drop uh, in RB, the parameter for cell-cell interaction, but potently uh, prevented the drop in alpha, the parameter for cell matrix interaction. And that was really exciting for us, as we had expected that it was the cell-cell interaction that was affected by imatinib. But imatinib protects endothelial cells by having uh, by making a stronger adherence of the cells to their matrix. Um, those data are presented in figure four of the paper. Then we did a series of experiments uh, demonstrating that it were really the focal adhesions uh, that were uh, enforced uh, by imatinib as shown uh, in the cartoon presented in figure eight. Currently, we are um, continuing this research in the lab and we expect to bring this, these findings into the clinics within several years. Indeed, uh, other methods are available to evaluate endothelial uh, barrier function. Essentially, there are two ones. Uh, one is measurement of um, endothelial permeability using a transfer assay, and the other one is measured measuring trans-endothelial electrical resistance, or TER. And the first one, uh, measuring permeability using a transfer assay, we always run in parallel when we do ESIS recordings, because uh, transfer experiments allow you to evaluate the passage of a molecule across the endothelium, which is closer to physiology, and then measuring an electrical uh, current. 
And those tracers had, have the advantage that they can vary in molecular weight from very small, like um, ions such as sodium, to very big, like molecules such as VLDL, very uh, low density lipoproteins. Those have a very uh, physio physiological relevance. Um, at the same time, those measurements have a drawback because they cannot uh, retrieve online data as we have with the ESIS. So you need to take samples, analyze them the next day, and after two days you have your results. And with ESIS, at the moment you're running your experiment, you get the data. The second uh, drawback um, is that the transvaal experiments do not allow to discriminate between uh, the contribution of cell-cell and cell matrix interactions to the overall permeability response. And the third one, and that's also important for us, is that transvaal experiments are very difficult to combine uh, with flow experiments, whereas with ESIS we can have flow over uh, the electrodes and do uh, permeability measurements or uh, barrier evaluation in the presence of flow. The other method is the transendothelial electrical resistance, and it was the merit of Professor van Hinsberg in the early 90s when he was at TNO Leiden in the Netherlands that he developed such a machine consisting of a transvaal placed in between two circular electrodes on top of the filter and two circular electrodes below uh, the filter. And um, here again, um, we were not able to discriminate between cell-cell and cell uh, matrix interactions. In addition, from those measurements, we cannot retrieve data from uh, about micromotion, proliferation, uh, migration, parameters you all can uh, measure by the ESIS recordings. A major thrust of my research is the identification of pharmacological targets for the regulation of vascular function and in particular for vascular permeability. Here I see a valuable role for ESIS in future screening programs. And with help of the Dutch Heart Foundation, we invested and bought a second ESIS machine equipped with a 96 well uh, reader. And that allows for semi high throughput screening for of small uh, SIRNA libraries. The primary research interest of my lab is regulation of endothelial permeability. So we use ESIS on a daily basis uh, evaluating uh, electrical resistance and impedance as a measure for barrier function. But that's not the sole application for which we use it, as we are interested in many other endothelial uh, characteristics, endothelial functions. We evaluate migration, where the wounding feature is very valuable. We measure proliferation. And a final thing that we also often use is the mi uh, micromotion mode. For me, the most fun experiment was definitely the one where we tried to perform ESIS measurements from a three-dimensional uh, cell culture, uh, because here we really went to the limits of what's possible with the device, and uh, it was a lot of uh, try and error. Um, the first thing we had to establish here is what, what carrier material we use for the 3D uh, cell culture. And uh, after killing a couple of cells, uh, we finally arrived at the th uh, three-dimensional collagen matrix, which we had then uh, to optimize because the thickness plays, of course, a role. Um, and uh, you also have to prevent that, that the current flows beneath the collagen matrix uh, from measurement to a reference electrode. So you had to, you had to glue and uh, you had to cut a small chambers, you had to modify the chambers. Uh, we got in contact with applied bio biophysics several times uh, and they helped us with all kinds of questions about carrier material insulation layers, glue, and it was really a lot of fun. Um, at the end, the experiments were semi-successful, I would say, uh, but definitely yielded some insight on measurements when you neglect alpha, so the cell-electrode uh, interaction.
The wireless uh, ESIS experiment uh, that I performed is embedded into a project we have currently running with the European Space Agency, where the idea is to send ESIS to the ISS space station and perform measurements uh, on endothelial cells under complete weightlessness. And as a preparation of, uh, of, of this mission, uh, we used a couple of machines to simulate hyper or hypo gravity. So these are devices where we use very high or very low G-forces uh, to simulate a start of the rocket, uh, to uh, simulate re-entry of the rocket. And um, to simulate high G-forces, we placed the whole uh, ESIS setup in a, in a large diameter centrifuge with an inner diameter of 8 meters and we just spun the whole, the whole experiment around uh, with up to 8 g-forces, so really, really extreme. And we weren't sure actually if the device will survive it, and the device did, but uh, one warning to everybody who wants to spin around their devices in a huge diameter centrifuge, use a, a solid-state hard drive computer uh, because otherwise uh, you completely wreck it. ESIS plays a quite essential role in my PhD project uh, because first of all it's the reason why I started my PhD together with Dr. von Jürg Marongen in Amsterdam at the Free University because I met uh, Gerten at uh, one of the ESIS user meetings that Applied Biophysics organizes every other year and he was searching for somebody to, uh, to look into uh, micro motions of cells, so tiny movements of the cell membrane within uh, confluent cell layers. And he was searching for somebody who could set up a three-dimensional um, cell culture on top of the ESIS device to neglect alpha from the measurement. And for me, with a, a biomedical background, that was an optimal project to start with. Uh, a second reason why ESIS is so essential for my PhD is because it stimulates uh, collaborations with other researchers uh, and that is due to its simplicity in handling. Uh, this is due to the amount of data you can uh, collect in a single experiment and this is due to the fact that it's quite inexpensive. So uh, uh, over the time uh, I got approached um, by a couple of uh, scientists which were interested in a method which wanted to have some specific drugs or cell types or substances tested and those uh, quick experiments uh, usually resulted in uh, ongoing side projects or manuscripts or articles so that that was very essential for my PhD project